I want to start off with a special thank you to the Pizitz Pirates Math Team for outfitting me this month. Now, Pizitz is from Alabama, and I have a special place in my heart for Alabama because I represented Alabama at National Math Counts way back in 19... The problems were a lot easier back then, so I've had to work really hard just to keep up with the students. And this month, I'm going to show you two of my favorite strategies. The first one is simply get your hands dirty, get in there, and do something. Because then you might have a chance to employ my second strategy, which is find a pattern, solve the problem. We're going to try that on this problem right here. We've got 11 boastful bees. They're all lined up in a row. Each bee, after the first one, brags that it collected one more than twice as many grains of pollen as the bee in front of it. Now, if the first bee has 100 grains of pollen, how many grains did the last bee, the 11th bee, collect? All right, so first bee, the first bee has 100. And that means the second bee has one more than double that, so we're going to double that and add one. That's going to give me 201. All right, so then the next B is going to have double that plus one. That's two times 201 is 402. Add one is 403. Yeah, we can keep going like this. We can double that and double 403. I mean, we could get the answer this way, right? We just sit and do a whole lot of arithmetic. This is 806 plus 1 is 807. Uh, I mean, I start to see a pattern coming out here, right? 1, 2, 4, 8. These are powers of 2. But eventually, these numbers are going to get big enough and start interfering with these numbers. Uh, I'm going to try to get a little bit more organized here. A little bit more organized. Let's start over for just a second. I'm going to use a little notation just to keep track of my thinking. And I'm not going to multiply all the numbers out because that's a little a little frightening as we just saw. So that B, B sub 1 is 100. And I'm going to use the B to stand for B and that little 1 just tells me this is the first B. And we're going to say the second B. B sub 2. And we are given the rule here. The second B gets double the pollen of the first B plus 1. Right? That's the rule. So what does the next B do? The next B, well, is double B2 plus 1. Okay, let's just double B2. We multiply this by 2. Well, 2 times 2, that's 2 squared. And again, I don't multiply these things all the way out because I'm going to look for patterns here. So I'm going to keep that exponent. Now I'm going to plus 1 times the 2 is 2, but then I have to add this one here is 3. If I keep this exponent here, instead of writing this as 4, because maybe I'll see a pattern in these exponents as well. Now I'm going to move on to b4, which collects double b3 plus 1. So now I have to double b3. So when I double this, I multiply 2 squared by 2, I get 2 cubed. And already I start to see that pattern emerging in those exponents. And I double the 3, I get 6, and then I add 1 is 7. So I see the pattern coming out in these exponents, and I can see it even more clearly if I drop that 1 right in there. I'm not so sure what's going on out here, though. So I'm going to go one more step, see if I can find that pattern, solve this problem. B5, double B4, and add 1. So when I double B4, multiply that by 2. Sure enough, exponent goes up one more. I've got 2 to the 4th. B1, and then I double the 7, I get 14. I add that 1, I get 15. And now it's clear, each time I'm doing this doubling step, I'm just going to move this exponent up by 1. So it's clear what's going on here, but these numbers out here are still a mystery to me. I want to look at these 1, 3, 7, 15. What's going on with these numbers? I mean, they're not quite, they're not quite doubling each time. They're doing a little more of that double and add 1. Do I see a pattern in these numbers? If I look at these numbers, there's this 2, 4, 8, 16. These numbers are 1 less than these. 7 is 1 less than 8. 3 is 1 less than 4. 1 is 1 less than 2. 15, 1 less than 16. So let's think of it that way. Let's think of this as 2 to the 4th B1 plus 2 to the 4th minus 1. We're thinking this 15 is 1 less than 16. Now let's see what happens when we take one more step. Does our pattern continue? B6, we double B5. Add 1. So now when I 
double b5, I'm going to double this, multiply that 2 to the 4th by 2. You know what happens there? It's going to give us our 2 to the 5th, just like we expected. We double the coefficient of that b1, and then we double that 2 to the 4th, we get 2 to the 5th. And then we double this, we get minus 2. But then we get this plus 1 over here, put those together, sure enough, we get minus 1. And we see how the pattern continues from this step to this step. And we go up to b7, we double b6, we're going to get that 2 to the 6th, b1, plus 2 to the 6th, minus 2. Then when we add 1, we'll get that minus 1 at the end. This pattern just keeps on continuing. So now we can write down an expression for b11. We're just going to continue following this pattern. b6 gives us 2 to the 5th, b1. b11 will give us 2 to the 10th, b1. Plus, up here, b6 has 2 to the 5th minus 1 out here. This is going to have 2 to the 10th minus 1. And now, we just have some arithmetic. Now, maybe you have your powers of 2 memorized, and if you don't, you can think of 2 to the 10th as 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 5th. It's 32 times 32. That's 1,024. And B, B1, well, I collected 100 grains, so 1,024 times 100 gives us that. And then we have to do this over here. 2 to the 10th is still 1,024 minus that 1. 1,023. And now we have to perform a little more arithmetic very carefully. We add these two, we get 1, 0, 3, 4, 2, 3. We found the pattern. We solved the problem. We're on to the next one. Here we are. We've got an infinitely large grid of squares. So this is going to go on forever and ever. We have a 2 by 2 region shaded here in the middle. And then we start just above the upper left shaded square. We're starting right there. And then we number them consecutive positive integers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And we just keep going around and around and around and around. And we want to find the integer that's in the sixth square to the right of the square numbered 5. Well, there's not enough room here because we're going to be scribbling some numbers on this. I'm going to make some more room for myself here. Here we go. First, I have to remember what we're looking for, sixth square to the right of this 5. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's my target right there. There's the winner. We want that number. And time to get our hands dirty. All right. Do something, mess around, look for patterns. I'm just going to start writing these numbers in. See if I see anything interesting. Don't see anything yet. 24, 25. I mean, we're talking about squares. I'm thinking about squares, but this is a square and it ends up in a weird place there. There's a 16 there. There's a 9 there. I don't see a pattern in that yet. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. We can do this all day long. Stop for a moment, and I see that I, well, I'm still thinking of squares. So we have a square in the middle here, and we're kind of making squares here. I see I've got this square, six by six square, all filled out, but I've got 32 in the corner. Well, that makes sense, right? Because we knocked out four squares here. Six squared is 36, but I didn't number these four in the middle. So I could see why the last number I'm going to write is six squared minus four. 6 squared minus 4 is 32. I think, well, that worked out here. I'll work one step in as well. I look one step in, and I have this little 4 by 4 square, but I didn't number any of these 4 in the middle. So the last number I'm going to write in this is 4 squared minus 4. Sure enough, 4 squared minus 4 is 12. I start to see a pattern. I got 4 squared minus 4, I got 6 squared minus 4, but where's 5 squared minus 4? Well, 5 squared minus 4 is 21. It's over here. Can I explain why 21 ends up there? 5 squared minus 4. There's my 5 squared right there. 5 by 5 grid. I have 5 squared little squares in here. I don't number any of these. This is going to be... 5 squared minus 4. And then I look one step in, and sure enough, that 5 right there is 3 squared minus 4. So this right in here is 3 squared minus 4. And I 
look at what happens when we go one step out. We go one step out. That's a seven by seven grid. I got seven squared minus the four in here. This right here is going to be seven squared minus four. And I'm focusing over here because my target's over here. Keep your eye on the ball. Now I'm going to start working this way. I see if I just keep going out, this pattern's just going to continue. And I can see why it's true. And the square I really care about is all the way out here. So this is 7 squared minus 4. I'm going to go out another step. This one's going to be 9 squared minus 4. Right there. This one's going to be 11 squared minus 4. This one is going to be 13 squared minus 4. And this one is going to be 15 squared minus 4. 15 squared is 225. I subtract that 4. I get 221. 220. 219. 218. 217. 216. And right here at the star, we've got 215. We found the pattern, and we solved the problem.